Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Today we have two great stories, and the first of them. Tales from Adventures League, Strike of the Entitled Planet. But before we start, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who likes and writes comments and supports our channel with subscriptions. So, I play a lot of D&D as a hobby, and I love to DM games on a regular basis. Unfortunately, I live in a small Midwestern town, so I rarely get people for private games. Luckily for me, the game shop in town hosts Adventurers League, which is an organized campaign group developed and run by Wizards of the Coast, the company behind Dungeons & Dragons. Without any alternatives, I started DMing AL games at this shop. I've been doing it for years and always have fun. About a week ago, I wanted to start a new private group. Because I was bored with experienced players, I decided I wanted to get people who were new to the game, so I put up flyers around town saying I was looking for people who wanted to learn to play D&D. After a week of people applying and interviewing, I decided on five people to make up my party. The party consisted of a barbarian, a wizard, a paladin, a ranger, and a rogue. Most of them were in their late teens and early 20s, except for the rogue who was a kid like 12 years old. I set our first session for the next week. Considering this was the first time ever playing, I decided to do something special. When I texted each of them the date of the first session, I also asked them about their favorite color. When the day of the first session came, I went to the game shop early and bought each of my players a $4 set of Chessex dice in their favorite color. When the players came in, they were happy and grateful, except for Rogue. Rogue looked at his dice and got a disgusted look on his face. I noticed this, but continued on with the session, but all throughout the session he was very standoffish and was very unenthusiastic. It started to be a bit of a problem, so when we came to a break I pulled Rogue aside and asked him what was wrong. Rogue, I don't like my dice. Me. Okay, what don't you like about them? Rogue, they're ugly and I don't like the color. Now to be fair, these dice were pale green with yellow accents to them, and I have to agree they were not the most attractive dice. I felt like I made a judgment error, so I decided to rectify the situation. Me. Okay, well, how about after this session we go over and pick out a set that you like? Rogue. Really? Me. Yeah, I don't want you to hate your dice, but I'm going to need you to be engaging with the group. Rogue agreed and his mood changed considerably. We continued with the session with no problems. When the session came to a close, Rogue jumped out of his chair, ran straight to the dice. After I packed up my stuff and quickly chatted with some of the other players, I met up with Rogue. However, when I approached him, I noticed he'd already picked out a set of dice, a $50 set of pewter. Me. Um, bro, I ain't buying you those. Rogue. But these are the ones I want. Me. I know, but those are $50. Rogue. But you said I can get whatever set I like. I like these. Me. Dude, I was expecting you to pick a cheap set of dice. Those are too expensive. I'm still willing to get you dice, but not the expensive ones. Rogue thought about it and got my point. He begrudgingly put down the metal dice and apologized to me. We then spent a good 10 minutes picking out a set of reasonably priced dice. He settled on a nice green and black set of $8 Chessex dice. Once that was settled, he thanked me and we left. Now, I hope this was going to be the end of the story. Unfortunately, as I've stated in the past, God hates me and wants to prove it. So, a week passes and I'm back at the game shop setting up for the next session. After I finished setting up, I noticed I had some time before my players showed up, so I decided to kill some time by talking with one of the employees. Suddenly, in the middle of our conversation, I felt a disturbance. A shift in gravity caused my body to feel like it was being pulled into something. The air smelled of fried chicken and sulfur. I knew in my heart that something wicked was coming. Entranced by curiosity's seductive power, I turned to look at what diabolical force was approaching what my eyes saw was a short, yet extremely obese woman wearing a muumuu and sporting a haircut that said, I want to speak to your CEO. And she was glaring at me with the anger of a thousand beholders. From behind her, I could make out a, surprisingly, familiar shape. It was Rogue. It suddenly dawned on me that this was his mother. RM, are you the guy that runs the Dungeons and Dragons game? Me. Uh, yes? She then rushed towards me with speed I didn't think was possible for her. Within seconds, she was right in my face. RM, my boy told me you were being mean to him. Me, how so? RM, he told me you wouldn't get him this set of dice he wanted. Me, 
The dice he wanted were $50. I offered to buy him a set of dice that was under 10. RM, well he wanted those dice and you offered to buy them for him, so buy them. Me, I'm not buying him those dice. They're $50. RM, don't you dare try to screw me. I know you get an employee discount. Suddenly, the employee that I was talking to chimed in. Employee, ma'am, I can assure you this man doesn't work here. RM, don't you dare lie to me. I know he works here. Me, ma'am, I don't work. Without warning, she slapped me across the face. This was no light slap. This is a Saitama level slap. Now to his credit, Rogue tried to intervene by telling his mom to calm down and it's no big deal. RM, I don't want any sass from you, boy. She then turned back to me. RM, now get my son whatever he wants or else I will have you fired. Do I make myself clear? Me, look lady, I don't work here and I'm not buying those di- She slapped me again. RM, how dare you raise your voice to me? I want to see your manager. Even though I was at my wits end, I tried one last time to reason with her. Me, read my lips. I don't effing work here. She slapped me again. RM, don't you dare curse in front of my son. Now, I'm not usually a confrontational guy. I typically try to keep calm as best I can, but after this B-word slapped me a third time, something snapped in my mind which led me to say some very harsh things. Me. Listen up, you funding crazy ham planet grunt. I do not and have not fudging worked here. I do not get a funding employee discount and I will not funding buy your crotch goblin a set of 50 funding dollar dice. Furthermore, due to your crappy actions as a parent, your son is no longer accepted at any of my games. Now, screw off. RM looked visibly upset and surprised and insulted. RM, I'm not leaving until I get those dice. Me, well it looks like you'll need to take your sausage fingers and stick them up your dried out bleep. Find the $50 you made last night working the street corner and buy them yourself. Because that's the only way you're getting those dice. Now get out of my face before I slap 400 pounds off your Ralphie May looking butt. At about this time, I snap out of my temporary insanity. RM looked stunned as if no one had spoken to her like this. Rogue's mouth was agape in disbelief and the employee was a mixture of horrified and trying to hold back laughter. I braced myself for whatever retaliation she was about to unleash on me. Surprisingly, she grabbed her son and walked out of the game store. As soon as she did, the employee burst out laughing. Once my players arrived, I explained what ended up happening as well as why Rogue was not going to be playing with this anymore, and they all had a good laugh. About an hour into our session, the store manager pulled me aside to ask why he received a call from a woman claiming one of the employees was insulting her. I told him what happened and how she hit me multiple times and caused me to snap. After confirming on the security cameras, he told me that although I was justified in defending myself, he couldn't allow me to insult his customers. He told me that he was banning me for a month. I accepted and informed my players that we had to move venues. We're playing our fifth session tonight at my place, and I got a new guy to replace Rogue. <laughs> Gotta love tourists. Little backstory. I live on an island, and there's only one laundromat, and I'm there the same day every week. Our island is 60% tourists, and most of those tourists are 55 plus. At this particular laundromat, there's a single air-conditioned room, so that's where I sit and watch Netflix until my laundry's done. I get mistaken for a worker there all the time, yet I know for a fact that there are no workers there, just one old drunk owner, who's never present, and about 20 washers and dryers. But today was a different story, let me tell you. I'm normally a very nice person, but I have the curse of a short temper. So there I am, sitting in the little room with headphones on, in which rich old white lady, we'll call her O.L., comes in. O.L. slams her laundry onto the table and stares at me. Shouldn't you be up front or something? Me, removing my headphones. Excuse me? O.L., it took me forever to find you. You're like hiding back here. Me. What do you mean? O.L., oh my god, whatever. She angrily takes out her wallet. How much? I thought she was just generally talking about the price of the machines. Me. $2.50 for a wash and $0.25 cents per five minutes on the dryer. Oh well. And dry cleaning, folding, and steam? Me. They don't have that here. Oh well. What? Fine. Fine. Here. I'll be back in an hour. Me. What? Oh well. Are you deaf or stupid? Please just fold it when you're done. I was beginning to understand the fact that she thought I worked here. Me. I'm not doing your laundry. Oh well. Why the F not? You're the only place on this dump island. Me. I don't work here. Oh well. Well, you look like you do. Fit right in with this slum. All you locals do. Me. Just get the F out of here. 
started to put my headphones on. Oh well, I'll pay you. Just do it and I'll come back. Me. Even if I did work here, I wouldn't be doing your laundry. Oh well. Why not? Me. Because you're a rude bee. Oh well. Packing up her laundry and turning very red in the face, I will call the manager. Me. I'll call him for you. Guess what? He's a local too. He owns this slum as you call it. Her face went from red to white. She packed up the rest of her clothes and jiggled her way out the door. And here I thought I looked decent today. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video to the end and I'll see you in the next one.